the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I mean, he's the sexiest man alive. Some people stay, stay still. His That's name right. is Idris Elba. Give it up. He's on Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. I mean, yeah. good, good morning. Look at this good morning. Guy. I'll still take that title. I, I mean, oh, thank day. you. Thank you. I'll take it. So you don't man. feel any you don't feel any type of way that they've moved on. Uh, I think it's Michael B. Jordan now. No, no, it's just amazing. That's, That's amazing, you know. But it, it does say alive, you know, sexiest man alive. alive. So as long as I'm alive, <laughs> I, yeah, in there. I, I'm clutching. <laughs> I'm clutching. <laughs> Onto it. Uh, in the theaters right now, uh, a lot of people, uh, including in my household, uh, my lady Jazz loves Luther, bro. Mm. Loves Luther. Put me on. I, I missed the, the series. So this is a series that you were on on BBC mm. early on that you have now brought the movie to us on. Yes. The Fallen Sun. Yeah, man. It's a big, you know, the TV show we did for like f 10 years. Right. Yep. Five seasons, 10 years. <laughs> Anyone that loves it, you know, has a dark side to their personalities. We just say that. Shout out to Jazz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's definitely something going on. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the the true core fans are really excited about the full-length feature, which I am too. It took a long time to come. And I'm just going to say this off the bat because I know this question is probably going to come. Am I going to play James Bond? No. Am I going to play Lufa for five pictures? Yes. Wow. Now, the there last you time you were here... I asked you about the James Bond thing off the air, mm. I think it was. Yes. Um, so I wasn't actually prepared to ask you about that because I knew the oh. answer was Luther. Yeah. I already knew that because yeah. I think you told me that, but we didn't talk about it on the air. So I wasn't mm. even going to go into the... Mm. Because Luther is yours. Yeah. This is not you stepping into some sort of, yeah. you know... It's the perfect storm, you know what I mean? Because, you know, as much as I'm complimented by the idea of playing James Bond, I always knew in the back of my head that Luther can take that same real estate, real estate mm. you know, big character, central position, you know, right. fighting bad guys. And But Luther has a, uh, from what I know of the two seasons that I've watched, <clears throat> um, Luther, it's deeper than just fighting bad guys. Luther's got his own demons from early on that mm. he's been dealing with. Mm. The breakup with his wife from the yes. first couple seasons. Well, she you know, died. Well, and, and she ended up dying, which is... Spoilers. Well, yeah. So, um, but also just all of that, right? Mm. And then some of the relationships that Luther even had with the criminals that he's been chasing down. Mm. He's, he's a very complex character. You know what I mean? He, <clears throat> he will go, you know, the full mile to catch someone, if the, even if that means breaking the law himself yeah you're upset luther's not you i don't you know, know you like that but luther's obsessed he like he's like a one of those detectives that gets thoroughly obsessed with the case and goes off the deep end absolutely and that's what the film now allows us to go wider and bigger and more international and you know just try just try a different sort of landscape altogether i'm excited for it so if i didn't follow the series can i watch the movie and uh, and still be good absolutely okay. yeah that was actually one of the challenges is to find a way to be loyal to the you right. know day ones and then you know introduce some new day ones to the movie you know what i mean and yeah. and it was it is a challenge but the film opens with a sequence that allows you to get some backstory and then launches you so if you don't know anything about luffy you still can get in and, and I'm guessing if you're a hardcore fan, there'll be little things that happen throughout the movie where you're like, oh, then a regular person may just not take anything from it at all. The, uh, yes, there's some, some Easter eggs like that. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. There's characters that have lived the span of the mm. season, the TV show that, you know, get introduced into the film. Um, so, I mean, I'm hoping that people go back and go, okay, I'll go, we'll watch season one. No, if you're looking for an episodic <clears throat> TV thing right now, like if you ran through some of the other things that are currently hot and you want to go back and watch something, Luther's one of those things mm. that you can spend time on and dip in, dip out. Mm. And it's just consistently good in a consistent storyline so far for I myself. I appreciate that. I mean, and myself. Idris, I was, I was looking at your uh, filmography earlier. You have such an interesting career because I feel like most people in the U.S., of course, know you originally as Stringer Bell on The Wire, mm. right? And that's obviously seen as like, for by Americans, as your moment. But you'd already been in the game for a minute by then. Was that your first break? Or did you have a, a, a big break in your career prior to that in England? Yeah, I mean, like, when I think about it, I, I started acting since I was like 20. I'm 50 now, that's like 30 years. So in my first five years, I had a couple of big breaks. Like, mm -hmm. I had a kid show straight out the back where I was playing a 16-year-old kid and I was 20. <laughs> I was right. in this TV show. What was it called? I'm just curious. Mm, I don't know if I want to tell you. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, so you're not nervous like, digging it like, up. No. 
I'm not ready for them them YouTube clips to come out. <laughs> but it was a great show. And for me and my mom and my dad and my family, that was a big break. Yeah. Right? Really? That's yeah. life changing. And then, I, and then I did a soap opera in England, which I can tell you called uh, Family Affairs. I did a soap opera. Okay. That was a big break for me. And, and you know, anyone that comes from the soap opera world that ends up in television is probably more experienced than most actors. Why do you say this? It's just because the turnover is amazing. Like you are, it was an everyday soap. You're working five days, six days a week, and you're shooting all the time. You get a new scene, you have to learn it on the spot, and then Boom. and it could be high emotion, low emotion. I mean, it is the, <clears throat> the quickest way to cut your teeth as an actor. So I did that. And then I did a TV show called um, Ultraviolet, which I actually made a UK, US version, and it's about vampires. They made a film, the Ultraviolet um, series of films, and that was essentially my big break that took me to basically America because I remember getting my O1 visa when they asked me to be in the pilot for the US version. They didn't end up picking up the show, but I got into the States that way. And that was in the late 90s. And then, you know, 2000, 2000 is when I got The Wire. So The Wire was definitely my biggest break. That was the one that put me on the map internationally um and change my life you when know? you look at the wire have you have you turned it on Re have you when's no. the last time you I, I i haven't i haven't seen it ever really i, I saw when we um hbo had a premiere in in new york city around 2001 or two so you spent no time with the wire no is it hard for and it's a whole different combo you don't like watching you don't like watching don't, the no, work really no. right? i don't <clears throat> it takes me out of, it takes me out of the job you know what i mean when i'm watching myself act i'm like ah oh i don't like to see it however you know when i talk to people about the wire i can have a conversation about it because i was there That's i right. shot those scenes so yeah. i have a different right. perspective but watching it as a viewer yeah, it's it's, and it's tough. Is it tough for you to enjoy it just yeah. as a viewer, yeah. right? Because you're critiquing it. Exactly. And what, and what about Luther worst. though? Which is like so your your brand at this point in many ways. Do you, yeah. you also don't watch Luther? It was tough. I saw the film. I saw the premiere in London. Um, Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like yourself? <laughs> Did you like yourself? <laughs> I loved the movie. No. I love I, myself. I love, <laughs> I love myself. I was so good. <laughs> I was so good. <laughs> Um, I enjoyed I enjoyed the film. I mean, it is a film. It's exciting. It's great to see the scale. Um, it's an incredible performance by Cynthia Erivo and yeah. uh, Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis played um, a Planet Planet of the Apes. Oh, okay, yeah. Played Caesar. He's an Caesar. incredible actor. So the film was good to watch. But yeah, you know, Rose, that, that was that was me sitting in my chair, sweating <laughs> my. <laughs> Nuts off. Now, um, you, it, it seems, you know, you know, so much was made of <clears throat> potentially you being James Bond, which was mostly the internet. I don't think you ever really had or even tried to go that path, right? Like that wasn't even, no. but, but it also makes me think that you're defining your own mm. trajectory here, right? Mm. Like you're really carving out what's Idris's, like this mm. is Luther is me. Mm. mine and i'm gonna the next we're gonna do five of these like this is gonna be a new chapter in my book but it's also a chap a chapter i get to control the narrative absolutely i would love to hear more about that as a an actor with your levels of success deciding mm. i'm gonna take some control over the next chapter of my book you know just to be super clear you know to get to a position where i can say this is how i mean i'm not going to play james bond i'm going to play this guy right you know what i mean to get to that position is a is a blessing i'm i'm super thankful and it isn't one that's afforded to everyone for sh for sure um <clears throat> i'll say that you know luther is the longest character i've played i've played him for 10 years over oh, you know over, over the season so i feel very very connected to that character you know what I mean? And I feel like if I was going to, you know, choose one character to, you know, get go go into my twilight years as an actor, you know, say, let's say 10 years of me still acting, I could do Luther. You know what what is mean? it about that character that I, I, I know you put time into it, but mm. is there something else about the individual that you really love being able to do? I think that he's a he's complex. Um, he suffers with some mental strain that I think we all suffer and he lives out his therapy through his work you know what I mean I relate to that as an actor mm. I relate, you know what I mean like I, I wouldn't say that I 
I have, I, we all have stresses, but I use my, I exercise my stresses through the characters I play. And Luther is the one character that I can really just let, let rip, you know, for, as an artist, as a, um, as a, you know, as a, I don't know how to explain it. Just someone that's investigative. Me personally, I'm investigative in my mind. And when you're chasing in film these characters that are super complex, like in this movie, you know, <clears throat> it takes a certain amount of brain power to do that, to, to pull that, mm -hmm. that um, portrayal together. So I love playing him. Um, also, you know, he breaks the mold. You know what I mean? You know, he's a black detective, I guess, but, you know, and, you know, tortured detective is a mold we've seen before. But this guy, I think he breaks the mold. He seems original. You know what I mean? He's not a carbon copy of anyone else. There's no other Luthers. With, with you know, I don't know, James Bond or whatever, you've seen, you know, that spy character do incredible fighting right, right, skills or right. whatever. But Luther's not like that. You know what I mean? He uses his brain. In, it's very, know. it is very cerebral. It's intellectual. It's very intellectual, yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I like playing him. And I, and I think that uh, he's very well written. You know, Neil Cross is an incredible <clears throat> writer of dark you know, <laughs> dark matter. Right. Like he, he also, with Luther, it's always relatable. You know what I'm saying? With certain other films, you know, the crimes are so like outside of the world, you know, it's like, oh, shadow governments and this, that, and the third. But with, right. <laughs> with Luther, it's kind of stuff that you actually can relate to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Idris, you are, oh, Rosenberg, you had something? Yeah, but go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna. I was gonna jump right to uh, where Idris is uh, going for Coachella. You know, I've seen Idris rock at Coachella. I don't know oh, if right. you guys know about this. This guy's gets on stage in the big dress in the you big, <laughs> big dress. <laughs> we we lost the big part. It's just dress now. Oh, just now dress? it's just dress. Yeah, it's dress. It, it, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do the big you dress you anymore. You know, it's little dress. <laughs> Big dress. Yeah, yeah just no, dress. not just dress. Just dress. Just dress. Just dress. <laughs> um, when, talk about the DJ, because when I found out you was a DJ, I immediately was kind of like, ah, of course, man, celebrity DJ. Come to find out, you've been DJing a long time. Yeah. No, he is yeah, a DJ. Bef like, before, before. By trade, you are an actual DJ also. This is not just a, this it, wasn't a hobby when you got famous. This nah, is your thing. It was my career. I mean, when I lived in New York, I've, I've told this story plenty of times, but I used to, DJ in New York in all the bars down in East Village as a way to, you know, be able to audition in the day. So I was working at night. Um, sometimes I was doing door work for Caroline's and then other times I was just DJing Madame X, Piano Bar, <clears throat> Ludlow Bar, all those places. And that was my, my bread and butter. And what was, what? first of all, at that point, were you carrying crates? Um, I'm, <laughs> guessing, I'm guessing you were. You were bringing crates of vinyl. What crates. were you playing? It was hip hop, a lot of hip hop. I used to get my records from Rock and Soul and um, yeah, shout to Rock and Soul. What's that shop down <clears throat> Fulton Avenue that's not there anymore? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, the one in Brooklyn. Uh, I, yeah, I used yeah. to, um, I used to order from there when I was a kid. Yeah, there was God. a Mr. J's, a Mr. J's close to it, and then there was this big record shop that was there. I forgot what it's called, man. I think Biggie says something about it in a, in a verse. Yeah, somewhere. I'm about to find it. Hold on. Anyway. I used to go get my records and it yeah. was, you know, five crates, walking in with five crates or, or boxes at the time. And had I you, had your hand truck, you know what I'm saying? You had your little, you know what I mean? Or you'd carry. I'd carry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't hand truck, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, had I, I was yet. broke. So. Um, one thing I'll never forget about vinyl is when you're playing Beat vinyl, Street. man. Beat, Beat Street. Street. There, you there you go. go. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Um, when you're playing vinyl, man, my nails are always messed up because you're digging into the Thing and yeah, your cuticles are cut up. Uh. That's how you knew a real DJ when your nails weren't looking too tough. What, what are you, uh, what are you using these days? What's your system I'm, of choice? I'm on CDJ's record box. Use a USB. Which USB? Doesn't. Shout out to the USB DJs out here. It's cheating, though, man. Really, I can't help it. It's cheating. Like, it guy, is. But like give me a whole crate of records that he's. USB. No, no, it is cheating, but it's better than the person that just slides the CD in the CDJ and acts like they're doing something while they dance with their hands and turn <laughs> buttons that don't mean. Yo, but speaking of which, that. I'm glad you brought that up, Idris. I have that. this, I have this thought. I'm curious what you think. I don't know if you've seen, but on social media, there's a lot of like DJs, particularly kid DJs. Like mm. parents have their kids mm. DJing, right? Mm. Here we go. And no, no, just hear me out. Hear me out. I brought this up the other day to none other than the legendary Rob Swift. He absolutely knew where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get your kids to be like hot on the internet by having them DJ. And for some reason, they've taught the kids that when you pit play on the record, DJs go like this. 
<laughs> and start dancing. And I'm like, I don't know one real DJ in life who, <laughs> between records, is dancing like a maniac. Like, it's all, we're going to end up seeing a whole generation of DJs who essentially learned how to DJ for how it looked on social media That's right. versus Rose, anything else. Rose, I'm going to have to stop you, though. Okay. I, I, I dance. <laughs> Come on, man. I you dance. Got dance. I've been, I've been in, I've been I, in the booth with Idris at Coachella. I dance. How do you dance though? You're not. It's not just hand dancing. You're actually throwing. No, down. no. It's more footwork, and you know, you got to keep your hands where they have to be. But right, you got to bop. I'm he dancing. Bops. I'm bopping. He's bopping. but, but, but hard. And and, and well, I, but I well, no. Idris is definitely sweating. He's definitely up there sweating. <laughs> He's working. He's working. I can see that. I can see but that. he's trying to. I'm but working. so some of it is. Some of it is too. You're trying to let the audience know that it's okay for them to dance and get them to celebrate. This is too. it. You know what I'm saying? This is it. Yeah. So I get that part. I've seen some great DJs, and when they dance, you dance. You just feel like they're enjoying themselves. Right. You 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 enjoying themselves. Listen, yeah. Young Chow, who DJs up here, you know he's a he's a, a big soca DJ. Uh, he plays a lot of Afro beats. Everything. He comes out from behind the DJ booth. <laughs> So he'll throw a record on, wow. come out from behind the DJ booth with the mic, yes. do the dances that are associated with <laughs> whatever record, get back on the turntables and get the next record going. I mean, it's so cool. So you, I, basically yeah. what I'm saying is you slacking, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Right. You got to take it to the next level. I do. Yo, Idris, um, were you resistant to technology with regard to DJing? Like, I'm a vinyl purist, but it took mm. me all the way to in the last year to go out and get a controller. Um, really? And now I'm very into it. Yeah, uh, I held yeah, on. Yeah. No, I mean, look, man, when you, you know, when you're carrying five crates around and then someone walks in with a bag of CDs and you're like, Dak. Yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when the night ends. How did you do and that? And they just get to walk out and, and they're like, I'm going to be here for an hour. And you're I'm like, my back. Oh, my God. So I, I, I was receptive to the change. You know, I'm still a little bit like, you know, I'm a vinyl. I have a lot of vinyl and, and I try and get as much vinyl as I can. I have a vinyl player at home so I can play it. But, <clears throat> yeah, I mean... I was receptive to it. Um, Idris, um, a, a lot was made about uh, you potentially, I think I read it right, uh, potentially doing uh, a movie, um, buying land and creating like a movie filmmaking facility. Mm. Um, can you tell us more about that and where that's planned to happen at okay. and how it's going? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I've, I did, I've made f seven movies in Africa. Okay. And in all that time, I've realized that there's a real um, capacity for, for a film industry there. And the film industry is very localized to South Africa currently, which is a great, it's a great, um, you know, industry. They've done really well. But the rest of Africa, I'm talking about, you know, a billion people haven't got the same sort of access to f movie making, which is... You know, it's, it's like not having radio stations. How are you supposed to tell your story, your story told yeah, by yeah. you? So, you know, I, I've been on this quest for about four years now, um, trying to figure out how to build capacity and build facilities that um, allow filmmakers. So Nigeria is a very big film industry, but yep. there is isn't Nollywood, that. shout yeah. to Nollywood. They don't like it. They don't like being called Nollywood. They don't like that. No. I just found this out the other day that it was a journalist that came from Canada, was visiting, I think it was in the 90s, and she just coined it oh, Nollywood. Well, I'll never say it again. <laughs> no, no. You can say it. No, I'm, it's I'm it's off what's that. most recognizable. <laughs> no, but I'm off that. We'll I just call it the Nigerian like, film industry. Yeah, the Nigerian film industry um, has, you know, huge amount of turnout, make a lot of movies, but not that many studios. Mm. Um, and the other component to the whole thing, you know, there's 1.4 billion people or 1.2 billion people in Africa. There's 2,000 cinemas across the continent. The whole continent. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Even though, you know, this part of the world, we've stopped going to the cinema where, you know, reluctant a little bit more since the COVID era, but everyone deserves to go to the cinema. Go to the movies, You know what I mean? It's, it's a communion. It's, a, right. it's where we learn, you know, fall in, fall in love with stories. Anyway, so this whole plan that I've been working on to, to I went to Ghana, my, my mom's Ghana, Ghanaian. I went to Ghana, partnered up with some people there. And the, 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 the president of Ghana has helped me with a policy that allows, uh, incentivize filmmakers to come to Accra, Love Ghana. That. And it's amazing. Oh, like, it's fine. amazing. Shout out so, to uh, Nana Akufo yes, Ada. Sir. You know what I mean? Of uh, the president of Ghana. And also, uh, and happy Independence Day to Ghana. Just yes, Independence just Day happened. yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Ghana obviously has seen a big, um, you know, return of, uh, year of the return. You know, a lot of African Americans, a lot of diaspora have come into Ghana over the Christmas period. And it just, you know, like... It's the thing to do now. It's amazing. It's oh, amazing. No, no, no. Have you done it? 
Of course. Of course. I saw you there. Yeah, we we partied there. Bugging, yes. yeah, we had a whole rooftop situation. It was a great night. <laughs> great night. Um, what type of timeline? Like, how does how does this play out over time? Because this is obviously exciting, right? Because mm. you think of what Tyler Perry did, was able to do mm. down in Georgia. I'm sure you're trying to do something similar in exactly. Ghana and, and even farther. Yeah. Um, but how long does this sort of thing take? Um, if if I may, maybe there's someone watching whose kid it loves film and doesn't even know that this is – Mm. Uh, a potential career path mm. for them without even leaving Ghana Absolutely. or, you know, an African nation. They can chase a career path down this and it can be lucrative, right? Because yeah. that's a big thing <clears throat> when I'm 10, 12 years old and parents are like, nah, you ain't never going to make film. You ain't, There's no money in that. Don't You know, or you got to go to the United States and you ain't doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now this opportunity presents itself. No, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's, it is about shifting that narrative and letting people understand that the creative industry is a big opportunity for employment you know what i mean for for narrative shifting for for me you know the time scale is twofold one the facilities you can build in a couple of years quite easily you know it's just about the the process of building a facility like that but alongside that is the capacity is the people you know i need to find crews i need to do an educative cut most of the crews in africa come from south africa right mm. now and they're great okay but i need to distribute that sort of capacity around africa so that's where the other component is about education and i'm trying to build a series of schools that <clears throat> get people prepared for exactly. the workforce and then at the same time you know you, you got to bring the work. So I've decided to, I'm shooting a film in Ghana at the end of the year. I'm going to, uh, some of the film that I'm directing is going to be shot in Ghana. And hopefully through, through this process, I'm going to proof the concept. I'm going to bring some HODs from different he heads of department from different parts of the world to come and train people in Ghana while we're shooting that film. Amazing. And then hopefully encourage other filmmakers to come. I'm going to put this out there because Will Packer said that he might take a uh, girl's trip too to Ghana. I yeah, we read that. that. That's right. We read yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we heard so, that. It's on knack, Will. Oh, so, <laughs> you, you have to do that, Will. No, you it, can't back it, out of it now. Because it was a rumor. <laughs> But it would be super dope. Wait, so that wasn't could. confirmed? It wasn't confirmed. It was it So was we just got to put the pressure on him. Well, but I think, you know. So I should tweet right now. I heard <laughs> Will Packer was on the fence about filming <laughs> Girls Trip 2. You know what I mean? It started putting the heat on him. No, my brother, he's focused and, you know, he recognizes I've made a lot of films of him. We shot Beast in South, South Africa. Africa yeah. And he was like, yo, man. Where else can we shoot in Africa? So that was the beginning of a, a you know, oh, I think that, that seed for him. But yeah, man, trying to do this thing. Idris Elba, ladies and gentlemen, Luther is in theaters right now. Um, you dry, you spitting any bars here? Yo, bring up that uh, Bosi, that that Wiley, Idris Elba, <laughs> Stefan Don. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Idris got bars on this. But, but yeah, yeah, but you know, it's an old record. No, no one's really playing it now. Not anymore. You, you know, but it, I'm never gonna forget it. Did you, you, you never did, forget it? Did you play? Um, I don't think you guys played um, Vroom. Vroom, no, that really was a joint. Um, me and um, who else is on it? Davido and Coffee. Shh. You're an artist, artist. I mean, I get about. Y'all never heard Idris's verse? On hey, it? but you don't have to play my verse in the radio. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> no, you you can just spit it live right now. You ready? No, I don't feel oh, that's the, sad. I don't feel Man, that's I'm the way we should sad. be going. I'm sweating immediately. Yeah, you saw that? Oh, Hit the joint. Yeah, Come on, you got the lyrics on. Two, that. three. Oh, ah. Oh, no. Nah, see. <laughs> You see? Hey, y'all, yeah, give yeah, it up. Yeah, Idris yeah, Elba, man. Yo, I love you, brother. I love you too, Love man. you too, man. <laughs>